A fight over tax dollars and accusations of government waste might be messier than the sewer pipes that started it. The tiny community of Crane Lake near the Canadian border has spent millions in the name of water quality. But some experts question if that's really necessary. Tonight, WCCO's Liz Collin investigates a history of mistrust and why some community members contemplate moving. We access Canada by water, we fish. What's not to like? The Nelsons take the more than four hour trip from the cities every weekend they can to Crane Lake well into the fall. Only recently uncertain about the paradise they paid for nine years ago. We just assume we're on an island. You know, we're insulated from them. They could never affect us, but that's not what happened. Word came a few years back from the Crane Lake Water and Sanitary District. It wanted to expand its wastewater treatment system, urging home and cabin owners to pay a $7,500 special assessment fee and a monthly maintenance fee to hook up to a centralized pipe to improve water quality in the lake. This would all go away. This would be a waste. But James Nelson, a plumber by trade, already spent $20,000. Ours is a simple one. Installing his own septic system. It's a wonderful system. Like Nelson, most homes and cabins here use individual sewage systems, whether it be septic, holding tanks, or composting toilets. It drains by gravity from the cabin. Nelson is one of many calling out what he considers a board with too much power, trying to get in on a big pot of taxpayer money. And when we tried to ask questions to that board... I'm Liz from CCO. How are you? We were met with resistance for months. Came all the way up here to find out just how great the sewer district is, right? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. We're just trying to figure out how you're spending your money and... And back to that in a moment. Bottom line, they just want our dollars to supplement their system. Crane Lake is home to about 100 residents year round. A few hundred more make their way here in warmer months. Small in population, to be sure. But WCCO found the community received help from state taxpayers to replace a problem some experts say doesn't exist. We were really frustrated. It was supposed to start with a review of all 284 septic systems on Crane Lake by the University of Minnesota's Water Resources Center. We want the community to have all the information before they make a decision. Sarah Hager and her team went lot by lot, labeling half of Crane Lake systems as non-compliant. But they never finished a report to recommend how to fix them. Hager believes the board was set on its answer before ever reviewing cheaper options. When it ended, it was kind of like, you wondered if our work was worth it. The board went ahead with the priciest choice, blasting through strong rock to extend a sewer line, hooking up homeowners and billing them up to $100 a month for the new service. That price tag doesn't include work covered by state taxpayers up front. The legacy amendment passed by voters increased the sales tax we pay, pouring money into protecting the environment. So far, Crane Lake has collected nearly $2 million for its sewer line project. Well, we figured for sure you'd be here at the meeting, so we thought it'd be a good time to catch you. Can Back to board chair up? Rob Just Scott, who finally agreed to talk to us. But what do you say to those critics who say that this is a waste of tax dollars? I would not say, necessary. well, I would say, number one, it's not a waste of tax dollars at all. Scott says the work won't get any cheaper, and he needs to make better use of a sewage treatment plant operating under capacity. Name a tax levying authority, okay, that isn't looked at. As far as you know, being too powerful, too whatever, because you're taking money from people, and we understand that. As a resort owner in the area, he says no one understands it better than he does. Scott pays nearly five thousand dollars a year in sewer costs. As for that U of M plan, he shot down. I looked at her plan and her whatever, and I didn't agree. We're in for the long term, so the kids, the grandkids, and whatever, this is in place, and it and it's just as expensive to get that stuff going. Dysfunctional. Operation. Still, it's left some bad blood between the board and property owners like James Nelson. You're thinking about leaving. Who's avoided the work so far, calling it a solution in search of a problem. We don't want to leave, but we would. Liz Collin, WCCO 4 News. In her report, Hager points out that water clarity hasn't changed much in decades in Crane Lake. And that's another reason some question the use of legacy dollars, taxpayer money that's supposed to protect and restore our waterways. Tomorrow at 5, we take a closer look at legacy funding, the process to apply, and the role lawmakers play in deciding where your dollars go.